<laughs> What's debt? What's debt? <laughs> I'm no up to my eyeballs in debt. Um, Pick at Financial Peace University, Franklin. <laughs> financial Peace. <laughs> I hate that, man. Sorry. <laughs> So, welcome to a couple Linda's because we're just a bunch of Linda's out here just trying to get through life. Uh, I'm Desiree, and I'm joined today with once again Rachel and Matt. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Hi. Great to be here. Yeah, well, thanks for being here. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, and you know, just for you know, you folks out there, this is just a show about um, conversation that. To me, I feel like there's this lost art with conversation that you, I feel like a lot of people don't know how to conduct themselves in the conversation. It's just a bunch of quips. And like, I'm, I'm not a uh, water cooler or small talk person. I want to jump in deep. Like as soon as I meet you, I'm like, so tell me about your relationship with your mother. <laughs> like I, like I, 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 I want to. <laughs> to know who you are and Matt you're the same way I have been accused of being a touch nosy from time to time (laughs) see I don't think of it as nosy I think it's like you're authentic you want to have authentic conversations right Um, so speaking of authentic conversations um, not to always go the negative route because I mean the world is crumbling obviously but we always want to think about well what actually is good in the world so Matt please tell me What is putting a smile on your face this week? Right now, the statement that um, not everything is negative, but the world is crumbling. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Just rolling that around for a moment. Um, But beyond that, um, the ability to be a mentor. Yeah. Um, At my alleged advancing age, um, (laughs) I find myself. Which there's no signs of. Audience, he looks 26. Thank you. Yes, we discussed that prior to recording. So it's hard to see that through the mic, but you can hear it. Um, (laughs) So (laughs) there's that. Um, So I find myself by default using phrases like when I was your age. And I understand what holding things out at arm's length means, that strange behavior. So anyway. I've been training and teaching kids, and to your point about conversation and communication, the thing that we've been training on has been making a human connection in order to do our job. And we spend actually the majority of the entire class talking about that. And so I delivered that message, and I've had kids reach out to me and tell me how it's actually immediately affected them in their workspace. And, that's awesome. and I feel like it's a personal achievement, not for me, but for them as well as professionals. So that's the first happy that comes to mind. Yeah. Oh, that and I'm drinking uh, Pinot Grigio. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> do you have, do like I have two? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> that always puts a smile on my face as well. Uh, Rachel, what's been putting a smile on your face? Yeah, so this is going to sound kind of odd, but I have been getting up with the sunrise every morning. Hey, now. Yes. What a concept. What a concept. Um, trying to get As, up before everyone else in my house and just um, being alone for like two hours. It's the best. It's freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. So um, my alone time has been what's putting a smile on my face. I've been getting up and listening to music that I want to listen to, whatever the fuck that is that day. <laughs> um, and it's been awesome. So with people in the house, are you listening on headset? Or are you just blasting the speaker? <laughs> They're sleepy damned. And what kind of music? We have questions. Oh, yeah. yes. So, uh, no, I'm too polite for Sleepy Damned, so it's either a low volume or it's on headphones. <laughs> um, and lately, it has been a lot of Brandy Carlisle. I'm not going to lie. I love her so God, much. you're such a lesbian. I, I really, you know what? <laughs> I told you, 2.6. 2.6 She's on the, on the scale. climb scale. All right, okay. All right, God. So, yeah. I don't even listen to Brandy Carlisle. I love Brandy Carlisle. But my card got revoked like years ago. You got your card revoked? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, she's she's a goddess. She's amazing. Okay. She's okay. even had Dolly Parton cover her song. What? What? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. That's what I'm saying. I stand corrected. I mean, anybody that tours with the Indigo Girls, it's got to be all right, right? 
God, I'm such a lesbian. Uh, oh. Yeah, that statement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And But you said that to a person that slept through an Indigo Girls concert. You bitch, Ooh. you didn't. I'm the worst. No way. <laughs> yeah. When, I did. where, why? A couple of years ago, um, there was a group of us that went to the Ryman to see the Indigo Girls, which, you know, the mother church of music and mm-hmm. Music City, of course. It's supposed to be amazing, right? But I just, I don't know their music, and I never really got into that what? whole thing. And so I went thinking like, okay, like I'll, I'll go. Cause I feel like this is a thing I'm supposed to do. And then I just, um, ended up falling asleep on one of the pews. So I'm kind of sad right now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so I saw them that same day, but not in that venue. Yeah. I was one of 20 people who won a satellite radio situation for <laughs> like responding to my email immediately. Yeah. Of and of course I did because I'm very tech savvy yeah. and all the things, <laughs> right? right? All the so things. You can tell. Again, audience, he's 26. <laughs> right, because again, young. So <laughs> so young. So young. Upper snapper, they call me. So in fact you'd never heard of the Indigo Girls until that <laughs> Right, right. I was like, someone introduced me to this. I didn't wait on them in Atlanta. <laughs> and and allegedly melt down on Emily in the front desk and tell her how she got me through high school, but that's all alleged. Oh, she got me through high school too. Right. <laughs> so I saw them at a private concert. Sleeping oh, yeah. would have been rude. I'm glad you caught a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a side note, glad you got to sleep. We all need our beauty rest. Good for you. The song Galileo makes my life. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. I will make a note. And Revisit. I will, I will mm-hmm. listen to the song right. Galileo. Officially outnumbered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Well, what's putting a smile on my face this week is Oh, yeah, because we didn't even ask you. Should we ask We're not good hosts right now. We've we got to get better. Yeah. At this. Desiree, what's putting a smile on your face this thank, week? Thank you so much for asking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a childhood dream came true, and I got to see Queen live. <gasps> With Adam Lambert. With Adam Lambert. That was like last night or so, was it? It was. Which is why you fell asleep. Which is the, why <laughs> I had to have a nap today. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I just, I I had a bookmark because I knew that they were coming to town and I obviously had never got to see Queen and obviously would have never gotten to see Freddie anyway because they hadn't been to the U.S. since like 82 or something. Um, but I thought, what, you know, these babies are getting a little up there, so I don't know how many more tours they've got in them, so I need to take advantage of this. But it wasn't until a week before that I just sprung up, and I was in bed, and I just sprung up. It was 11 o'clock, and I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Because I think I saw a post about a crowd that was at a Green Day concert in Ireland, and then they were all singing. England, I watched it. It was outdoor. Mm-hmm. They all did Bohemian Rhapsody start mm-hmm. to finish. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I was laying down, like, scrolling through Facebook, saw that, and thought, oh, my God. What? what I'm going. So I looked. I got on Ticketmaster. I got on the app, and I looked at the seats, and I was like, well, if I'm going, I, I want to see them. I want to be close enough. I'm not going to get nosebleeds, and I'm not going to worry about finding someone else that's like, well, I don't know if I want to spend that. Da, da, da. I'm like, I'm going to spend what I'm going to spend. And I saw one ticket left on the floor, <gasps> center, what? dead on with the stage. It was So the stage is in the shape of a guitar, the body of the guitar is the back where the drums and everything is, and then the neck jets out, mm-hmm. and then the edge of the guitar where the uh, pins are and all that stuff, because I don't know guitar lingo. Anyways, <laughs> there was a seat that was Pins. right the there <laughs> at the very, <laughs> very edge, and I was just like, that's my seat. That's it I went back and forth. For you, from your childhood. Do you it know how long reserved. they've been holding that seat they've for you? They've been holding that seat for years. I don't believe in fate. That sounds like fucking fate. It was fate. It's and fucking so, fate. And so I posted on Facebook because I, I was looking at the price. And the price wasn't bad, but it's not a price that I would pay for tickets ever, really, unless it's something special. And so I posted on Facebook. I was like, so just, you know, asking for a friend. What would you pay? I saw that. That's post. what that That's was about. That's what that was oh, about. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is what is the max amount? And like, a lot of people are like, "Honey, I would drop a grand for this, a thousand. I mean, uh, eight hundred for that, or this." I'm like, "Honey, <laughs> wow. Okay, <laughs> I'm." over here being cheap then if that's what the majority of you all are dropping and then a couple people are like 50 bucks i'm like <laughs> today's me, version please. of i'm okay you're okay right I mean, yeah. 
So I was like, okay, I don't feel so bad. And so I just, I got on there. It was still there. And I just hit send um, or hit purchase. And my credit card went through. You know, thank God. Because there's always that moment where you're like, ooh. Yeah. That's why I hate uh, the new chips. Right. Because the noise makes the same noise whether you've been accepted or declined in a lot of stores. They're it like, makes that wah, wah. And I'm like, shit. Shut up. Shit. Shut up. Oh, oh, oh no! It went through. Oh, it cool, went through. cool. But cool. The, the, so it doesn't it, like uh, I remember being in line like at Kroger. I always would go through the self checkout line mm-hmm. so that you know the embarrassment is not there. Yeah. Um, but you're just kind of there's always that gamble because you've seen those memes where it's like someone is like it's a like a gif of someone just kind of waiting to see if their card's gonna go through. <laughs> now I had plenty of money. That's why I was even looking at things. But still, like there's always that I moment. Know, where my chip reader didn't work at the Exxon yesterday, and Caleb judged me over Tic Tacs, right? and I didn't like that. And, but I, like it went through the third time. Or yeah, whatever. don't like judge that, me. There's something wrong with their well, reader. He was judging me because I was paying for Tic Tacs with a debit card. But <laughs> who carries cash in this town? No Nobody carries, carries cash in this town. Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's judging because it's pain. I feel so guilty when I do that because I'm like, God, this is dumb. I know I should have 38 <laughs> cents, but I just don't. Just don't. I don't, don't know what to tell it's, you. I would have to search for it. In. No, I mean the world, but I, but Mr. Financial Planner person says that you should like pay everything in dollars or whatever. I'm sorry. Are we, are we talking are about we the envelopes talk about about again? Because I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I can't. I'm not doing that. I don't know. Apparently he's got a lot of time and money. I've got a hashtag YOLO thing because young. <laughs> so <laughs> I know things. So I know things like that. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, I don't yeah. know. I've been left to my own devices with a credit card and no keeper. Yeah. So. Well, you and I have talked about this. I live in debt. Right? <laughs> okay. We all live in debt. And the number one thing that it says, like when you've got student loan debt, when you go to the page to see like how you get out of your student loan debt, and there's a list of all the ways you can get out of your student loan debt. Mm-hmm. Number one literally says, unless they've changed it, one dot you die, period. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that's the only way to get out of it. That's the only way to get out of it. So you die. You die. Like they literally have that on there. Uh, I've implicitly page. played by this rule. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give myself some credit. I think you and should. you know, Bank of America says that if I make the minimum payment, I'll be out of this in 29 short years. That's right. 29 <laughs> so, short years. I mean, I'm in good <laughs> shape. Right. Am I right? I'm serious. <laughs> well, that's what I've been kind of thinking about, especially this last year, where I've always been like, well, I don't have it, so I'm not going to do it. I don't have the mm. money. I'm not going to do it. And so, especially these last, like, 10 months, I've just been, like, throwing money out of my car window. I'm sorry. The world is going to fucking hell in a handbasket, not to be cliche. So why not? Why not? I mean, just ramp up this positive moment. This is what's making me happy. (laughs) If I've got, like... Damn it. Kim Jong... Mm, now, which one is it? Yeah, know. the one with the bad hair. It isn't it's like the Mad TV Didn't guy. They all kind hair. Of bad yeah, hair. yeah, you Alfred know what I'm e. saying. <laughs> I shouldn't know that at my age, but I think that's what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it is. At your tender age of 26, how do you know who that is? Tender age. I'm an old soul. I like you so much. I'll give you that. We can can be honest about that part. Oh, I like you so much. (laughs) Um, Yes, exactly. He's going to kill us all anyway. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And also, in some pissing contest with, you know. Yeah. But then I see my friends who are retired and they like did everything right oh, and like they're that. living it up right now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I that want that. Good. But then I'm like, am I really gonna even make it to retirement? I, you Let's, know, that's all a matter of perspective. You know, like I'll I, never retire. Yeah, yeah, I like to work. You have to have, have a to purpose. Do something. No, 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 no. They still have purpose. Uh, they're they? living their life. They're living I'm, the fuck out nah, of their life. That's, that's what matters. I was doing now. I'm yeah. recording a podcast and drinking Sav Blanc in the middle of the that's afternoon. Right. <laughs> right. But we, so all- we just went from Pinot Grigio to Sav Blanc. I'm sorry. I just want to point Whatever. that out. Uh, it's white error. wine. There's been an error. In this <laughs> One of the two is it's correct. It's white fucking wine. Is it's what a it choose your own weird. adventure, which someone my age also shouldn't know. But I'm, I just want to leave some doors open. <laughs> It's okay, guys. He's never heard of Encyclopedia Brown either. Yeah, my mother didn't sell world books in our cul-de-sac at all. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen. Um, but no, I mean, that is, you know, I never really thought of retirement, but like seeing people like living their lives in retirement and doing it well, I was like, oh, I kind of want to, I don't want to do that. But then again, I'm like, mm, I don't what know do if I'm going to make do? it. What do you want to do in your retirement? Yeah travel why aren't you doing it now uh well i am she is. that's the Her thing childhood like, I'm, dream came true yeah, like hours ago true. i'm traveling like if an opportunity to like just hop on a plane and go to europe pops up i did it you know yeah 
but I'm paying for it now. Barcelona. <laughs> but I'm Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to... It, it just kind of freed me up to say, like, okay, this is a possibility. You don't have to sit and wait and scrimp and save to do something like this. That there's opportunities to do it. And so uh, that's all I'm saying is that not just to just sit and make all of the uh, alleged right decisions and choices. I know we, you know, say make good choices, but a good choice could be self, too. It could be self-indulgent. It puts a smile on your face and I say, do it, right? Yeah. But then again, my religion is hedonism. So um, so not at all. Otherwise you would be a more dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh well I'm smart. Yeah. Like I I I like most of my stuff is like my student loans are paid off miraculously. Like how did that even happen? So I kinda had a little bit of wiggle room, but I mean I have like some 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 debt, simple debt, not anything crazy as to what I hear other friends have. And I'm like, yeah. 'cause I I'm over here like freaking out. I'm like, Oh, honey, I'm good compared right. to what you've got going yeah. on. By friends, she means me. Right. <laughs> Thank Bye. you for clarification before we continue. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to out anybody here. Sorry. Right. And it's I don't right. know I your paid f- for two graduate degrees. I have no shame. Well, it's right. more yeah, it's just yeah. the graduate degrees. Like it just costs people an arm and a leg. And so being a you, graduate student is like being retired. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, girl. Appreciate it. Sorry. End of podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> End of episode. I enrolled in the student of life program and it just, it, yeah. it requires it's sort of a running bar tab everywhere you go. It's worked for you. It's worked great it's for worked me. Great yeah, I'm having a great it's time. It's really working out. Yeah. Guys, he like looks your so skin, his skin is like It's dewy. hard to describe a try. It's dewy. It, he looks so good. He looks so good, guys. He looks so good. You like don't even it's, know. It's, oh, just how do you get it so dewy? Do you What's your you regimen? You like, know there has to be a moisturizing routine <laughs> behind this madness, y'all. And he's Come got on. dimples, but no wrinkles. And I got dimples. Mm. No. Dimples for days. No, dimples yeah, days. no wrinkles. Not a wrinkle. Stop no. rubbing there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just so we're clear, that was my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Let's talk about, um, so article I ran across was saying how the best choices you can make in life are who you cho- choose to spend time with. Mm. And so, uh, again, that's all, that's also something that I've been really paying attention to is like, who do I, uh, give energy to and receive energy from? Mm-hmm. And I know there's always a talk about, well, I want to get rid of negativity in my life and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, why did you allow it in in the first place? Um, so, like, what are your thoughts on that being a large factor in your, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say success, but, like, what just what gives you happiness? Because uh, to me, like, living in our community, I know something you mentioned is that that's what gives me life is our set of friends. You know, it's an amazing group of people and it is yeah it's it's a best kept secret i say where we are particularly our little corner of the world Mm -hmm. which if you didn't go further than the interstate would be just a series of chain restaurants just like every other (laughs) town you never quite heard of or camp place (laughs) and you know then you then you go west uh, you know manifest destiny and get a whole mile or two across the track and find that there's a whole world of people who are deserving of your energy because your effort should be equal to your reward. And the article that you talk about talks about, and and, you know, some may call it kismet, some may call it fate, Mm. some may call it spirituality, twin flames, soulmates, a whole host of things. But no, it absolutely has to do with putting yourself out there, being vulnerable, finding connections with others and, and getting that in in like kind by default, it's a delight. Yeah. And, like, I've been in this community for a number of years, like, just kind of in and out. Like, I was here for college and then moved away for a few, a few years and then moved back, thinking I would never move back to a small town. But I find myself, I found myself really craving it craving that I don't know warm hug which I know sounds like super lame and like ugh, but that's honestly how it feels and the moments when I think 
like a few months ago, I figured I'm going to be moving out of the state, like obviously for career reasons and just, you know, maybe wanting a change of pace. I, in order to do that, I probably need to move out of state to a city. I was thinking DC, New York, Chicago, something like that. But when it came push to shove, I wasn't ready to go. Mm -hmm. And that was because of the community that I had here. And I was blown away by that feeling Mm -hmm. of, wow, I, like once I got a new job in town, I had this sense of relief that I didn't have to leave. Right. And it's been from just, and it's as simple as, you know, after work, heading over to, you know, our local hangout and running into <laughs> student of life yes. master's program. Yes. 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 Which yes. is, you know, why we're here today. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, but there was just so many things that I just was not ready to give up. And it was those friendships. It was the, um, like Rachel, we met through the feminist drinking club. Like those are things that I had started, but I was like, you know, I'm not really ready to leave that. You know, I, I love the community that this has been, that this is, that this is built among, amongst women. Um, but you are not from Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt and I both have lived in Tennessee for a number of years. So I kind of want to get your perspective on coming into a new community because you've been here, what, two years now? Two years, yeah. Yeah, two years. Um, I was really apprehensive, um, first of all, to move back south. Um, I last lived in Philadelphia. Um, and secondly, to move to a town that was so small. Um, I moved around a lot as a kid because of what my parents did. Um, but we always were in smaller communities. My mom always served uh, churches in really small communities. And so I mostly went to high school in a town that was a lot like this, except for there was no college. So when I was like, Eek, where are you taking me, lovely spouse that has gotten a job? Where are, why, why, why are we doing this? Philadelphia is really nice. <laughs> um, what, where are we going? Um, I've been pleasantly surprised uh, because when we first moved here, there were a lot of things that really freaked me out. Like the fact that our, the store where we bought our mattress also sold bison meat. <laughs> um, Wait, what? Yep. I know yep. exactly. It's right by the cemetery to make it worse. Yeah. See, I love they, that you know exactly what she was <laughs> talking about. Exactly and that couple has now sold about. it and are, are retired. And Is I think they're right? actually traveling around in an RV of all things. So there's to your <laughs> retirement thing there. Potentially hawking bison and wherever well priced sort of sleep mattresses That's and right. things. Yeah. And speaking of that, I also love how like uh, a while ago I posted something about like who has the most in depth um, like vehicle clean. Like I, I wanted to get my interior of my car done and I put like people were like oh the place on Jefferson or the place on Jackson and everybody just knew what you were talking about so a friend wrote as like I love how everybody just knows what you're talking about when you just say oh the place on dot 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 the one that's all you that's all you really need here um so I think the adjustment for me it was more just getting my wrapping my mind around the fact that I am moving back south so you feel like you're taking a step back yeah I, I did initially um and I've been pleasantly surprised um to find a community here. I'm, I'm having a little bit more of a struggle sometimes because um, being a mom means that you spend time with other moms. And sometimes that's great and I've met some great other moms. Um, and sometimes here that kind of takes me outside of the community that you guys are talking about being so much in love with and puts me in a position where I'm trying to uh, reassert my values. The fact that I don't really feel like I need some big brick McMansion or you know, uh, lots and lots of name brand clothing for my small human that grows out of everything really fucking fast. Anyway. I can't believe baby shoes cost as much as big people (laughs) shoes. That's crazy. They're so expensive. They do. They are the same price. Gross. It's crazy. And they wear them for like 10 minutes, but they are (laughs) delicious and they're edible or well, I would like to eat them, but (laughs) I don't think you're supposed supposed to, but don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) You've seen them. Oh God. They're just so, but they're just as expensive. It's true. So why would you to your point? Why would you? But it's one of those things where I feel like I still kind of have to live in two worlds here, which I struggle with a little more. And maybe that's why reading this article, I wasn't as the article that Desiree referred to. I'm wasn't as, happy about my potential for happiness, I guess. <laughs> Eek. Um, Speak on it. Yeah. I also deal with the really bizarre community at the university here. 
um, which sometimes can be a blessing and sometimes can be a curse. Define bizarre for those of us yeah. new to the game. Don't name names, though. I yes. will not name names. <laughs> oh, believe me. I cannot name names. Right. Be as obtusely specific as possible. <laughs> I'm really fucking obtuse, considering I'm using my real name for this. So. Um, guys, academics are weird. Yeah. I just want to put that out there. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't want to get like a hateful response if this ever does go live, but academics are fucking weird as shit. And sometimes they are a bizarre brand of narcissistic assholes. Sometimes they're lovely people who just cannot find their own butthole with their hands because they're so deep in their own research. Um, I'm going to regret all of this. Um, but <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's known. I think it's just kind of a well-known thing. Yeah. And people that don't, academics that don't take themselves so seriously recognize yes. that and they joke about it themselves. Yes. Which is what I like to think of myself. An academic that doesn't take myself so seriously. Mostly because I don't get paid enough to take myself seriously. Right? Well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that, so I'm, I'm in these multiple worlds. So where I found this lovely and amazing community, like with doing, feminist drinking club or like getting to be here tonight um with super young matt um, <laughs> and uh it reminds me it's almost time for a nap oh, almost time <laughs> and like some of the other mothers that i have met who are lovely and amazing people there are people outside of that community that i do have to interact with um that does make it a little harder for me to to kind of see where where I fit and where I can feel comfortable. So. That's what I've heard is that, um, like, I think that this area is as charming and, you know, as encultured as it is because the university is here. Mm -hmm. But then also the folks that move here to be a part of the university have a completely different experience than some of the rest of us. So I've had some conversations with some other friends who just have had a completely negative experience because mm -hmm. of... Um, what they've experienced in the university and then also maybe if they moved here during the time period where uh this area was even more conservative than it is today because it's grown mm -hmm. it's it, i'm not saying it's progressive by any means but it's gotten more progressive well, we have a reagan mural yeah, yeah we, we do and he's it's like, like being defaced we call him so the reagan zombie steps. that's what we call him so his face is like slowly falling off like there are big chunks that like chipped off it's like zombie reagan Zombie oh, Reagan. Right. I was wondering. I was like, I saw it the mm -hmm. other day at a protest. I was like, Oh, Reagan, honey. Well, hi, Reagan. Touch up. <laughs> you, need, you need some you love, need there, that, baby. Uh, right, little rouge, honey. Like the what is it? The spray from like Death Becomes Her. They would he would use the the spray the uh, mannequin. Mm. Like what? I was sorry. So I was watching Death Becomes Her before. <laughs> I love that you just work that in too. I really do. So I speaking of the 25th anniversary of my yeah. favorite childhood memory. <laughs> um, speaking of that, all the things from my Childhood while we're on the subject. While we're on the subject, not on the subject. Um, but, yeah, I, I digress. Um, and you, you really do digress. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh, so yeah. it's, it is interesting to see the different perspectives coming from what your connection to this area is. But, Matt, you, you, you had a thought on what friendships and what uh, connections to people make with you. I mean, you even look at it from a career standpoint, right? Like, what do you need to get to the next level in you your know, career? Well, I would have to know what that is first. I'm more of a stumbling, bumbling thing. <laughs> he says, clutching his box of Chardonnay. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's not a plan, just so we're clear. Um <laughs> But I don't know. I just follow the whole principle, mm -hmm. living in the moment, being in the now, making the connection with people. It's amazing how many corporate training things, which, again, anymore is teaching people how to be human, how to get your <laughs> face out of your phone or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And those, those skills you'll go home and use on your family inevitably mm -hmm. because yeah. they aren't. That's the whole point we're trying to teach people. Don't come to work and, yes, leave your madness behind, but you're not putting on a costume. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're, it's still you, and, and that there's the rub, the ability to still 
find that and connect with others. Now, I prefer to do that over martini, which may or may <laughs> not be at a corporate function, but that's not important <laughs> right now. <laughs> may or may not have been on a dinner cruise with three open bars, which is their fault. Three open bars. Three open Hello. bars. Hello. One on each deck. Hello. Holy what about shit. the Lido deck? <laughs> that's way up top. I was down in Steerage like Leo DiCaprio singing Missy Elliott Notorious with people, but that's not important <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> I love it. That's, that's where you it. ended up. That was your Irish folk music, it right? Because they do that was, part where they're it, dancing, it, it, and you're like, no, it's Missy Elliott. Very much the same thing. Same, yeah, exactly just, the same. You know, you can just go up and order a drink. Come on, be honest. Anybody can do that. But yeah. you go up and hee hee and order a drink, that's more of a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. You know, yes. Don't stop till you get enough, which there wasn't that night. But I digress. So, yeah, I like <laughs> the idea of connecting <laughs> with others. <laughs> And in whatever and, form that in takes. whatever form or format that takes, and um, it's being real. Yes, mm. it's being vulnerable. I don't speak. You know, this is totally pilfered from someone. If we're going live with this, but um, the an academic who's actually not weird, mm. uh, who talks about being vulnerable, yeah. and how it's the birthplace of joy and creativity and connection, and the connection is biologically why. It, the ability to connect is neurobiologically how we're wired. It's why we're here and what gives it's what gives life its purpose and meaning. And again, that's a direct quote if we need to footnote that. Mm, yeah. But it she's dead on. Have you found in your, you know, numerous twenty six years that it has become easier to be vulnerable or harder? Easier. Yeah. Because hmm. you learn as you go. When uh, so can I quote someone else? I know yeah, you'd yeah. like my own thoughts mm-hmm. at some point. I'll get there. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> someone talks about being 18, 40, and 60. It's the 18, 40, 60 principle. It's mm. a TV psychologist or something. You buy the DVD. At 18, you care what people think of you to the point where it scares you to death. At 40, you adopt this attitude of, you know, I don't give a shit what anybody thinks about me. I'm going to do my thing, and you can all go straight to hell. And you get to 60 and realize no one's thinking about you. <laughs> so I think the older you get, the more you adopt that mentality and realize mm. everybody is 95% of the time in their own head, yeah. mm-hmm. which is to the point of our conversation, right? To get out of that and to reverse that tactic and to say, yeah, but who are you? And what is your relationship with your mother? And right. tell me about that, <laughs> right? You mentioned kismet and fate, too. Like, do you believe in fate? Oh, my God. It happens all the time. Yep. And the more open yeah. you are to it. Yep. And knowing that Neptune is in retrograde or Saturn or something. Somebody's um, in retrograde. Yeah. Somebody's always in fucking so, retrograde. Right. <laughs> um, no, absolutely. Because too many... Too many things happen to be chalked up to mere coincidence. Hmm. Yep. Too many specific, amazing, phenomenal things. And that's where you say that's the universe. And Mm. having been raised Southern Baptist, I'm Mm. to believe that that's a holy trinity and and a thing. And then you go, "Mm, it's all of it. And I know I'm trying to unpack a whole lot all of a sudden. But, you know, to your point, (laughs) it's there's a guiding universal force out there. Call Mm. it what you will, but be open and in touch with it and with your fellow man and the rest sort of. Equal Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, as a you know person that's in a fifty-five-year-old you know soul, um, I came to some of these things I feel like a little earlier than I normally would because I you know surround myself with um, the more evolved folk because I feel like as you age you, you you're more evolved because the rest of us are out here being young and dumb and so completely insecure and I spend the majority of my time with people who sure they they've come to terms with their insecurities but they don't let them drive them as much as you do when you're young mm-hmm. and so I feel like I've gotten this like uh just no holds barred training and so I've, I've been implementing it into my life as it goes on so anyways I got, like a few years ago it was more about saying a and this was a line from a movie but I can't think of the movie right now but maybe you'll know Matt like how about a slow yes instead of a fast no sounds familiar but okay was it the Jackson 5 American yes mm. it was Jackson 5 yes. American Dream Vanessa Williams yes. allegedly she was playing the 
uh, agent or whatever. She was saying was that it's a very for gory. cable straight to TV thing. Yeah, it, it was, was like on it ABC so good, and mini I've series. Seen it like Twenty five times. It was a mini series. They was, still do those. They show it on like VH one or oh. BT every holiday weekend because that's what I do. Is just like if I walk past a television set <laughs> and the Jacksons an American Dream is on, like that's oh. that's it. That's what I'm doing for the day. Okay. Even if it's at Best right. Buy, I'm sitting at Best Buy for eight now, hours. I'm making sure it's the same one that I'm thinking that it is that I have seen. An, more times than I have any right to have seen. And it's the one where Joe Jackson kills the mouse. Yeah, Ben. Mouse. He kills Ben. He kills Ben. He kills ben. Yeah. The mouse is named Ben. It's Honey. Is Michael Jack about? Ben. Ben is about a mouse. Yeah. Love he kills the mouse. It's Pat Mouse. Like Honey, just, have you not oh, seen that movie? It's in that miniseries. Like, oh, that's yeah. right. Lucidly and sober, not necessarily. You said it was during the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it came out like anywhere between 92 and 94. It was on uh, like every night yes. during the week, oh, I was like actively on ABC. Those years, I'm sorry. Or there was that. Yeah. It was on like ABC or NBC or something like that. It was an event. That. Like I grew, I'm a black family. Like that's, we did that. Like we watched every single night. And so when I'm home on the holidays, like that's, that's what's on. Either that or the yeah. Temptations biopic that's like five hours <gasps> or the five heartbeats. Times. Yeah. So anywho, I feel like I'm, that's crazy. That's how I live my life was based on this line that was delivered by Vanessa Williams talking to you. Um, how about you give a slow yes instead of a fast no? And so that's what I started doing like five years ago when someone was, uh, I remember I started hanging out with this group of women when I was in Vegas. It was like, the last few months that I figured I was going to be there and I was just like out here being adventurous as fuck. They're like, Oh, let's go do this hike or do this trip or do this thing. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. I've never done it before, but I'm tired of saying no Mm -hmm. or just being like, Oh, I don't do that. Or so it served me so well. And so that's, that's something that I always try to do is just not find like what I was saying earlier about like just going for it and just doing it. Mm-hmm. Like if you've got some kind of means to do it, do it. You're not going to regret that experience. You can pay down that debt or do whatever a little bit later. I mean, don't get crazy out there and just. I mean, it's all about moderation. But, you know, if you. I wouldn't hike in the desert or anything, but, you know, good for you. <laughs> I don't want to hide any <laughs> It's beautiful, I don't want to be outside. Though. Of course it is. It's I've gorgeous. been. I know. I have the screensaver. <laughs> I just see. don't need to go, but you good for you. You can see from the luxury of your, your home. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, it's, it got to the point where, like, some of my regular friends that I was hanging out with, like, they would be like, girl, what are you doing? Like, every time I text you to do something, you're like, oh, I'm going on a hot air balloon. <laughs> like, you're always doing something. Why? I didn't do that. But she's like, you're always doing something wild as hell. Like, why is that? I'm like, well, we only have one life to live. Mm. We're not guaranteed to tomorrow. So why not do everything that we can while we can? Yeah, there are rosebuds my eBay. Sorry. No, that was perfect. Oh, someone else also said that, by the way, guys. Matt did not invent that. Um. <laughs> I didn't. Well, I wouldn't. I mean, God, I'm 26, much less 126. I'm continue. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, so, so Desiree, do you also believe in fate? I, you know, fate and, and circumstance and coincidence, I, I don't know what to make of any of it. All I know is to, to be open and say yes to what may be uncomfortable because what comes of it has been so impactful, so moving, and I've gotten to places where I never thought that I would have gotten to just because I was like, okay. Or, <laughs> uh, can, I, sure. can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. What makes you uncomfortable? Yeah. Uh, most things. <laughs> <laughs> um, the shorter list is what doesn't. So for the sake of time, let's go there. Let's go with everything but. Uh, what makes me well, or, or, or in its context or in general? Well, okay. I'm an awkward person, so I, it's hard to answer what makes me uncomfortable. But I've I'm a recovering awkward person. Like I feel like I've gotten better edit <laughs> like I can hide it better or I don't let it phase me or dictate everything that I do is oh, oh I'm sorry did that does that amuse you <laughs> you have created a snort or a chortle I'm so sorry as it were I'm so sorry that I snorted um, 
that you're laughing at my awkwardness. Not, no, I that makes me more right, awkward. Right, it makes it better. It makes it so <laughs> much better. <laughs> Laugh at your awkwardness. I've never seen you as an awkward person. I, it, I mean, I was sitting here thinking the same thing. In the time that I've known you, I've never Isn't seen that you as an funny? awkward person. You're I think it's a, it's internal. I figured out a way to mask it on the oh. outside, but it's like so. Okay, awkward, right? Uh-huh. So for me, the negotiation of the the hug, right? Oh. Like if we're friends, if oh. we're close, then like absolutely, like duh. Like, get in here. Like, let's hug. But there's the acquaintances mm-hmm. and the do we do a full body? Do we do no, a no, no. side? That's do it. We do I a, can solve that it's, for you. It's the Sideways me. hug. Do do the fun heads together. You're like your, Heads together, ass out. But with yeah, who? Absolutely. With people you really don't want to hug. Okay. Well, right. But it's more about, <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> So if I get a, so if you get a Am side right? hug, from, right? so right. heads together, right? Oh my god, hey, hey. <laughs> so if you get a side hug and a hi from Matt, you're nothing right. to him. Just know that you know, and yeah. with all of Christ's love, I say you're dead to me. <laughs> Now I live in fear that that's how tonight's gonna end. Okay. Oh no, honey, you get a full on body hug. Okay, okay, but but how much of that is like okay? So within yeah. gay culture, right? We have this way of just playing up. Like we'll be like, oh, hi. how much of it's just like we're just kind of playing up something campy and it's cute and fun. Like even though you care about a person, but you're just kind of doing something silly well, with each other. It's like know. an inside I feel joke. Like you're teetering on like sacred ground because you're talking about Jack McFarlane and Karen Walker <laughs> and some heroes of mine who are on their way back September 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern and um, so I, I think you just want to be careful where you tread to answer your question um, no of course there's vapid nonsense and well and, you're just being silly and, with your well, friends there's your moms that some of yes. them you're like Oh, honey, you don't get this at all, do you? Because yeah. there's no one home. There's no right. <laughs> so, there's no like, you have that. But we'll yeah. still see bad moms, and you can have another Chardonnay that's two. You're brave. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Or, but then you have the people that are like, girl, you are going to make terrible decisions about your health with me tonight. Like, that's... <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, that's yes. a full-on hug. That's a full hug. Tits in. We are tits making terrible in. decisions uh, tonight. That's what that right. is. Let's let's together, just, yeah, like do it. Just, let's just connected. press them to each other. Yes. If, if you're classy enough to wear underwear. Just, right. you know. I'm really interested in this thing of like people believing in fate more. Thank you. Oh, right. Thank fate. You yeah. Let's get God. back to that. Right. I'll, I'll do that. Because um, the happiness okay, thing is okay. super up in the air for me right now. Fate. So. Fate. Uh, I like, my mom always kind of, I feel like my mom always kind of said like, you know, pay attention to signs, Mm -hmm. you know, like mom, I, I I got a lot of my, the way that I lead my life is from like little things that my mom drilled home. Mm. Like she said, uh, for example, I don't want you ever to be dependent on no man. Well, I took it to the heart. next level. Like I was like, I took to that heart. to heart. I'm like, yes, mother, I will never be dependent on a man yeah, because I get my watching women. The I'm going to get <laughs> every holiday. I like him. <laughs> um, but I feel like she said something about just kind of pay attention and just kind of. To. Uh, f- yeah, just, just, just stay open, mm-hmm. you know, like don't feel like you, the worst thing that you can do is to. And we, we were told this, that we're supposed to kind of have this life plan, or we feel like we're supposed to have this life plan. But I'm like, honey, who has a life, who is able to, con- like, like successfully follow a life plan? Like, get out of here. Um, but to be open to what opportunities present themselves and to not be afraid to take them. Um, and I feel like I've always just done that. Like when people ask me like, Oh, how did you get my honey? I don't know. I just, the, that yellow brick road just started to appear in front of me. And like Dorothy, I just followed it. Um, like the careers that I've had, the places that I've been, it's more about someone was like, Oh, let's do this thing. And I'm like, okay, sure. And I follow the path and it's, it's not led me astray too much, except for like me, maybe some former lovers. I should have not made that decision. But other than that. That's why they call them lovers. (laughs) So we're clear. That's why they call them former. Former. Uh, (laughs) No, majority of them have been awesome. There's only like a few that I completely regret. Um, So. Only a few, that's good. That's yeah. Um, but like, like, what have been some parts in your life where you just kind of followed 
the tracks that were laid before you? Or has that happened? Girl, I'm struggling with that question of fate right now. Oh, I'm really struggling. Yes, with that. you've yeah. asked it and not answered it, so let's turn yeah. that over to you. Yeah, well, I'm, there, uh, what I'm saying is, is like there have been lots of times where I felt like I've followed a certain path or gone a certain way. Um, when I was younger, I felt like I was really open to the fact that you know, you know, I used to dream things, and if I had feelings, I would call the person I had feelings about and let them know I was thinking of them. And wow. you know, I'm I. You know, in that way, I don't know whether I guess psychologists would call it a natural, an empath, right? You're an empath, you're a natural, naturally empathetic person. Um, growing up, I was always told that you were, um, we, my grandmother called it like, um, not a sight, but like, you know, an intuition. You were an intuitive sort of person. She told you this about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. The issue is, is that mother's I Mother's or father's side, just curious. Mother's side. Yeah. Um, She's actually uh, who my child is named for, too, that grandmother. Love it. Um, Went back to how was your relationship with your mother. Go yeah. It, it's kept a generation. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> what. <laughs> but um, I feel like I have sort of been actively working over most of my adult life to tamp down that side of me. Because I feel like it is all tied in with my anxiety, which I feel like if you are a natural intuitive you also have, I also deal with anxiety. And so I've had a harder time as I've become an adult sorting out what's my natural intuition and what is just my anxiety overpopulating my brain. And that's been a real struggle for me. And so there've been a lot of things that but I But your used... anxiety is based in the fact that you're empathetic and willing yeah. to show your emotion and feelings towards people. Yeah. It should be the opposite. I'm just going to go down on record and say. Oh, I wish that it was. It's been one of those things where that's been a continual struggle for me. So in some ways I have kind of drifted. I've sort of tried to push away a little bit of that belief in fate and signs. and But why? The dreaming of dreams. I guess because it frightens me to think that it could be. Those, but if it's, those things could be real. But if it's fate, if it is, hmm. then ultimately in a sense you almost can't control it. So why have anxiety over it? Ah, because anxiety is always tied to control, right? That desire for control. Well, and academics' jobs oh. are to control and predict, right? Believe me. Believe me. I'm teaching religious <laughs> studies. Um, I found a little bit of solace recently. Um, on well, researchers' jobs, I should say. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I should say this sounds really damn cliche, but I found a little bit of solace recently in the teachings of the Buddha because, I mean, come on. Um but, uh, and I, you know, I have sort of fallen in love with, um, I've never let go. You've mentioned the fact that being raised Southern Baptist, you've sort of kept this belief in a higher power, whatever that looks like, right? That it's never gone away. And that's never gone away for me either, despite the fact that everything about my biography should suggest that I should have let that go a long time ago, right? Namely what? Probably because I was so hurt and damaged by people who also had deep belief. See also every Catholic. Yeah. Okay. See also every Catholic, most Southern Baptists. <laughs> and well, I, people who believe that they are right without any. The Catholics get to drink on paper. I know. At least they get to drink on oh, paper. paper. Tiny, you know, they got <laughs> they got to share the cup, and that you know fucking sucks. They say sucks, never but... take one Baptist fishing. Yeah. And drink all your beer. Take they, two. They will. They will. Drink. <laughs> they will touch none. They will touch none because yeah. somebody's <laughs> watching. We used to we used to tell the joke that um you know how you know um that it's a Methodist in the liquor store. Because they say hello to someone. They'll actually speak to they each other. speak. Yeah, yeah. See, I knew I was in the lane. Okay. <laughs> okay, but not to diverge from the yeah. anxiety and the empath, empathy yeah. and the being so an empath been, and thing. I've been trying to sort out whether or not I uh, want to fully let go of fate or embrace it. Whether I want to reapproach that, whether I want to reapproach what I was told as a child that I have a natural intuition and, and as a young person growing up. Or whether I want to let it all go. Oh my know? God, it's the only thing that gets me through. I don't feel like yeah. I can get one, one side of town to the other without fate and my natural intuition. See, I, that's why I have a hard time. This article too, like with the decisions, the decision making and surrounding your pe yourself with people who make you happy. And I'm like, maybe that's what the... I've um, always done. That. I'll say midlife crisis so that you and I will, we won't talk about age here. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up say, to you soon enough, but go ahead. I know. I'll also say <laughs> midlife crisis. Maybe that's what the midlife crisis is coming from is I've lost that compass of, you know, and I do try to surround myself with good people and people that I care about. Oh, and, I feel like you do and, that. Sure. Um, but then trying to sort out like, where does that, where does that part of me that used to feel like I could actually know where I was going? Where did, where did she go? 
But do we ever actually know where we're going? No, no I don't mean the destination. I, I mean the next step. I used to be very confident in the next step. I never have believed in a destination. I've never been very good at that. That was part well, of the destination. The finish line is death. Yeah. Until then, it's it's surprises and evolution. Right. We're all getting there. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no getting out of death, which is something I'm surprisingly fairly comfortable with. But that's a good thing. Yeah. I, here's what I do know: mm. be an empath. Believe do in it. fate. Just do it. Harness the power of your, what did you say your grandmother called you? An intuitive. An intuitive? hmm I like it. Yeah. Well, also as a, there's the added piece of being a, I don't for lack of a better term, like a heteroperformative. Oh, yeah, which is definitely what I am. Right. I need. To, I need to. I mean, I can well, imagine what that means, but I need you to tell well, me what that means. Um, like w- when you are a woman in a relationship with a, a male, cis male, there's these this like weight of societal norms that you have to carry with your everything mm-hmm. every day of every. Oh. And, and and that hits particularly hard on a. On, a woman? Is that what on you're a woman, yes. On a woman, period, on a no, no, no. On a woman that's in a relationship with, with a cis, cis male, male. Yeah. yeah. The societal norms like holds heavy on them um, because you're having to make decisions based on what a what's best for allegedly what's best for a family, what's mm-hmm. best for yes. husband, Always dynamic, for child. Mm-hmm. And the woman rarely gets the opportunity unless they are in a super progressive relationship with a progressive human being. Rarely do they get to follow their own path. or There's like a path that's laid for them that they're just trying to keep everybody on track with. God, I hope he never listens to this. But even for someone that's fairly progressive, I mean, you still wind up in kind of a – my spouse is pretty freaking progressive. Yeah. You know, but it's still – you still wind up in these roles where you're managing your household and that kind of thing. And um, For me, as someone that's always passed, like mm. we've talked about, as being completely 120%. Yeah. Heterosexual as a bisexual, that's never been easy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah but, but it takes another level when you have children. It really does. Yeah. You know, like if you're just two uh, folks out here, mm-hmm. you're just living together, married, whatever, doing your thing, but there's not this this feeling of like, what are we going to do with our children? And so you have to kind of change almost like it feels like people change who they are mm-hmm. once they get kids so that they can fit this certain norm. There's a lot of like contradicting stuff out there about that. There have been some recent articles that have been really well done. There's a publication out there called um, Vela Magazine, um, which is written. I love that their tagline is written by women, um, but they make it clear that it's not necessarily for women. It's really for anyone. I mean, the articles are there, you know, to be read. And um, there was a piece recently about. Um, it might have been last year, but it was. I keep rereading it. <laughs> yeah. But it's about the fact that if you are uh, both a mother and also trying to have some creative pursuit all your own or or something that's yours. Those two things are usually, you're usually told by society, those two things are in direct contradiction. Tell this to J.K. Rowling. Yeah, tell me about it. Because it's this idea that like you can't, you like one, there was a, an article in The Atlantic before that, that this particular article was responding to. And that woman said that the point of art is to unsettle. And that's the opposite of motherhood um, because you're supposed to be making the world safe. And I feel like that's one way where we've sort of fucked up a little bit how we think about parenthood. Um, because, yeah, you're trying to create a, a quote unquote safe environment for your child, but you're also trying to teach your child how to live in the world. And them coming out as a creative individual is able to communicate with other people necessitates them having experiences Beyond just you making some sort of perfect household. Um, but those are contradicting messages because society wants you to make a perfect you household. You use the verb, thankfully, and I appreciate it. Molly Coddle, earlier yes. in our conversation, Thanks. I think before we started, went to Mike. And so you do want to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And yet you want to push them out of the nest because mm-hmm. if you don't, then they're not functioning members of society. Right. So, and so therein lies a dichotomy. Mm-hmm. And so trying to find the happy medium between, and I really think Molly Coddling does not equal loving your child. You can love your child and create and give them an affectionate home base where they know that they're loved, um, where they can come back to you as sort of this 
um, person to help them kind of find their way. Um, for, for those that are not familiar with that term, can you define it? Which term? Molly. Molly coddle. Oh, it's where you like spoil um, or like make sure that every need o- is overly, attended to. Overly, overly, overly yeah, yes. excessively overly cautious yeah. parenting. Yeah, making sure that no boo boos happen and mm-hmm. scrapes and things. Yeah, and, no boo boos, yeah. no needs go unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. I, well, no wants go unfulfilled. Good parenting is making sure no needs go unfulfilled. Bad parenting. See is, also our current administration. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Molly coddled <laughs> motherfuckers. Is that the same as the helicopter parent yeah. team term? I would put it in the same category. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um and that's one of those things where it's just But you do your child a disservice if you keep them from every mm-hmm. hurt. Right. Or life experience. I mean, we mm-hmm. all talk about these journeys and mm-hmm. fates and things. I mean, but if you don't get out there and make mistakes and stumble around, you know, but you have to fuck up a little bit. Weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. Which you all <laughs> may or may not know. Weevils wobble, but about. they don't fall yeah. down. Well, can we define what fate means to you? Mm-hmm. Like when you say fate, like whenever I hear someone say the word fate, it feels like there's this path that you just are following that you can't navigate away from that everything you're just kind of uh, you're just going towards so it. fate to you is like this magnetism that you're drawn to that you have no that you have de- no control it, it's over a destiny, right? because it, it's a destiny a destination that you have no control over where you're going whereas it, to me that feels so ugh, like what well, why does fate <laughs> feel like a, a burden to you if it's i'm hearing that correctly um, just based on the way that I've heard people describe, like, oh, it's fate. I, you know, I, I can't control it, or I, I'm I didn't just, have a way out of it. I don't have a way. It's just that's what's just going to happen. So okay. everything I do is just going to make that happen. Well, it's but like, who's, well, isn't there the quote out there something about being the master of your own fate? Yes, and so that's what I like. That's the way I like to think of it. But for some reason, whenever I hear someone say fate, my, the connotation has more to do with something that's a little more negative and a little you more. You don't have a inc- choice. There's yes. No choice. Yeah. No fate to me sounds like you have no choice that this is just going to happen to you. But if it should, or it's supposed to, and it's good and it's positive, isn't that okay? Yeah. But you don't always know if your fate is going to be, I don't know. Like I, not- I've often heard that the way to approach the divine is to give thanks when good things happen. And, um, Credit the chaos and terribleness of the universe when bad things happen, which I think is kind of an interesting way to think of it. Think of it this way. So the universe is constantly bending towards chaos. We know that, right? It's with like a second law of thermodynamics or whatever. Like it, and there'll be an entropy, right? We're constantly moving You're towards so it. much smarter than I am. I don't know. <laughs> but keep talking because that's sure. fascinating. We're, but we're, yes. we're constantly moving toward chaos right? at yes. all times. Right. Yes, totally. Definitely. Yes. Yes. Um mm-hmm. and so we're moving, we're getting warmer. Right. And we're constantly like there, things tend Literally to heat warmer. and they tend okay. toward entropy, which is chaos. Okay. So enthalpy and entropy. Um, what are the words again? Enthalpy and entropy. I can't even spell the first one. That's unusual because I play words with friends. Yeah. What's the first word? <laughs> You're going to win next time because it's E N T H. I've had too much wine. E N T H. I'm not going to win because I have seven A's A- at the bottom of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> A L B Y. Yes. Enthalpy. Enthalpy. Fascinating. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's heat and chaos. We are constantly moving toward a more chaotic universe. Um, and that's just fact. That's just scientific fact. Everything it will tend toward chaos. It's like if you you drop your socks on the floor, you know, they're still gonna fucking be there. It's not like the universe comes in and it's like, I'm gonna pick up Desiree's socks because she left them on the floor. No, and then it's more likely that you will then drop another pair of socks. And so on and so forth. Everything tends toward chaos. Well, then I feel um, like I'm battling against that all the time because yes. I'm always futzing and picking up and making beds and mm-hmm. putting dishes where they go and the whole thing. And that is the human experience. That's part of why we have religion is because we're fighting against this chaotic universe at all times. We want to find order, order in the chaos, the and that's fate. So what about people that don't necessarily practice a religion? What are they doing? What are they doing? Drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> yeah. Living. Well, you're saying like the, the, that's why religion exists for these folks to perhaps deal with their fate. Perhaps they're more comfortable with the fact that there's chaos and they can live with chaos. Oh, okay. And I deeply respect that. Okay. Um, but we all live in chaos, whether we want to admit it or not, and thusly right. comes the anxiety, right? Right. Some of us are looking for order. Yep. I think of faith, though, as relational. It has more to do with the people that you meet versus the people that you don't meet. No, that's true. And, and right, and you meet people, and you're like, "We well, could you possibly know that?" Yeah. Out of all the 
people in the universe, mm-hmm. then you crossed my path and said that mm-hmm. to me right now. And I got to say. That's fate. And, and, and to me, that's not a, like, I didn't have a choice. It was a burdensome, mm-hmm. onerous. Onerous is not the right word. Onus is that, the word, right? Onerous. You were good. Am you're I? right. Onus. An onus on you is something you have to do. An onus onerous is, is something that's, like, burdensome. Okay. Either way. Whatever. It's just, yeah. it sucked. There's the, if there's the common denominator. Yeah. No, but it doesn't suck because if you're led to it and you're there for the right reason to your point, mm-hmm. then it's not a bad, then fate is not a bad thing. I wouldn't look at fate as a bad thing. All right. Not to take you off point. You, keep no, going, keep going no, I think you're exactly, I think it's one of those things where I've often struggled with it because I felt very strong connections to people. Um, and living in a society where, as Desiree pointed out, when you're in a heteronormative relationship. That's my least favorite word, heteronormative. I know, heteronormative. Doesn't that suck? I hate it. it sounds awful. I've it seen sounds it. so I've oppressive. It. It, now, that, unlike fate, is oppressive as, if I can just yeah. go back to charm school, oppressive as fuck. It's oppressive <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> heteronormative. It, I, and, and, you know, you all started talking about women, which not to detract from that. Yes. It also affects men. Oh, absolutely. In what not, way? Not well, not me particularly. <laughs> not normal nor hetero, but um, it, but I have seen men because they feel like they have to fill that role, mm-hmm. and men who don't necessarily fit that role, I have met more than one. Mm-hmm. Yet they have to; they feel the burden of living the heteronormative, and I feel like that burden is no more or less, but equal to. You know, you don't have to bear children and the whole thing physically, but Mm -hmm. I mean, you still have to be there and play the role when you're like, this is not really where I belong. Well, so how much of it's more just societal norms than it is hetero norms? It is societal. At the if you want to be overarching about it, it is absolutely societal. I I don't even know how you sort all that out either. Well, but I mean, societal norms are by and large, correct me if I'm wrong, heteronormative. Yes. 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 Even in crazy cultures where there's some stuff going on that you're like, oh my God, because I mean, I do have Netflix. So I've seen the odd <laughs> documentary and I'm like, get out of town. Why? And someone help this boy. Mm-hmm. No, but I, it, the normativity, whatever that is, but mm-hmm. specifically this conversation, yeah. heteronormativity mm-hmm. is oppressive mm-hmm. in and of itself. Okay, so I'll mm-hmm. tell you what. So this kid came over from the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. I was working in an office, you know, it's a dumb job you have for 10 minutes or whatever. And I was asking, well, how is it over there? And what are people like with, you know, what's LGBT culture versus heteronormative culture or whatever? And he just looked at me honestly, quizzically. He was a child. Mm-hmm. He was like 21 or whatever. And um, Just a few years ago. Yeah, just at right, I mean, well, right, this, is like, this is like two weeks ago. <laughs> so he seemed a child at the ripe age of 26. But um, he says to me, he just honestly didn't understand even what I was asking. Mm-hmm. Because he was like, well, you know, a person could be with a man, and then six months later we might see them on the sidewalk cafe, and they might be with a woman, or yeah, vice thank versa. You God. Like, it's just yeah, and it, and and so to to define people, mm. you know, because I come from Alabama, where if I can remember nothing about the 126 people I graduated with, I can mm. tell you whether they're an Alabama and Auburn fan. Mm. Like, I mean, we put people in boxes <laughs> yes, for certain very important reasons in accordance with the prophecy, <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's one of them. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But over in Amsterdam, things are working that are, is that the country I said? I don't know. It's not important right now. But it's somewhere delightful yes. with windmills. And, and they <laughs> and they just don't give a shit. Your geography is on point, by the way, darling. Uh, it's on point. Right. I know. Mm-hmm. I can find Antarctica and everything. So, it, But it, it, they didn't give a shit. So that, I don't think that they were hinged in by mm-hmm. that societal pressure or mm-hmm. heteronormative. Because a lot of it is Western and a lot of it is yep. American. Am I right or am I right? You're yeah. right. It's the thing, though, is it's like there's a limit to the connections that you feel allowed to have. Going back to relationships between men, tell exactly. me about it. This is a guy. I am the bridge over the river. by honey. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I because they see like, oh, well, you're you understand. Like, you know, I can't pick curtains, but I know mm-hmm. what to do on third and eleven. You right. know, yeah. so that makes us <laughs> that that makes a man of a certain ilk kind mm-hmm. of okay with where I'm at. Right. You know. You can't Am pick I making curtains? any sense? I'm going to use that anyone. phrase. I'm going to use that phrase for the rest of my life. A <laughs> bridge over the river by. God, I love bridge that. Bridge over the river by. That's right. That is the title of this episode. That is the title of this episode. (laughs) I'm writing it down. (laughs) The bridge. Oh, great. My poor dear departed mother can finally be proud. That's all right. So, yeah. That's what she always wanted for me in vacation. (laughs) (laughs) 
to to wrap up the show to to get us on our, our last subject do you have a to take us to eat so we sober up yes oh good absorbing the chardonnay yeah. The epilogue. <laughs> 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 to take us to the epilogue. Uh, do you have a honey for the week? Mm. You, I, you know what? I have a honey for myself. Oh, what's your yeah. I have some negative self-talk here. No. Oh, you know, but this might be just all a right, form. All right, let's it might do be it. fate. Honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> honey. What the fuck are you doing? Do not drink red wine in the fucking summer. It is hot. Do not. It Do is. not. It's hot. It's hot. Because the yeah. surefire way to get a motherfucking hangover, you dumb bitch. Yeah, red wine is to drink all But to whole... give her some credit, she's drinking white right now. That's right. I am drinking white right now. Learn my lesson. And don't feel yeah. bad about yourself for your empty glass of red. Not because it was red, but because I'm it's sorry. Empty. Oh, shit. <laughs> shit. No. This honey is not for you. No. <laughs> it's for me. <laughs> no, I. For... No, I get it. It's hot. Yeah. Yeah, normally don't I don't drink, drink red in the summer. Do not drink that shit. But because... I don't know. I was just feeling like some Pinot Noir or I a tape. I don't know. I don't care how fucking young you feel, bitch. I'm talking to myself now. This is not <laughs> my Desiree. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm up in arms about the word bitch. I'm trying to figure that shit out right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> now we've recently talked about not using that word. Um, no matter how young you feel, you will get a fucking hangover if you drink a shit ton of red wine. Because yes. you are not a child yep. anymore. Do, no, are we talking about just in the warmer months? or In, in, in general. Mean, in general. But it's worse in the warmer months. Because something, Define there's shit ton. Like, there's I something. Mean, what's the euro to dollar right I now? I don't know. Like, <laughs> what was it? Like six fucking glasses? Last time? Yeah. Over what was period it? of time? No. Oh, yeah, no. I had like four while I was sitting here. Because I was just like. Psh. Well, you can't help you needed a warm up? Yeah, I did need a warm up. I mean, no one's counting. counting. I didn't need as much foreplay with you, baby. No. <laughs> oh, hey, we just jumped right <laughs> we in. Did, we really did. Full no breast one just hug. full breast That's hug. The thing. Oh, yeah, no, no, no sideways hugs with you. Um, and then you know, um, hey, you so dummy, honey, dummy me, honey, honey, drink white wine, and then honey, don't go. You know what has less alcohol content? A beer. So I'll have a beer at the bar after I've had all oh, this so red wine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, honey, mis- honey, honey, make more intelligent drinking choices because you look like a dumb bitch when you do something like that. Was this I after the fact? That word properly, just thank you, hear. thank you. What? Oh, I felt like shit. Oh, the next did morning. you the next day? Oh, I felt like shit. Oh, honey, you're I also way. I also drunk texted some people, which oh. I don't do. So apparently, I've learned now red wine you makes me drunk text. Oh, I made some connections, all right. <laughs> 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 No. Honey, why do you think they invented phones? <laughs> so that we could just do a Honey, host of regrettable things. Not the kind of connections I should have been making. I got you. Honey. <laughs> Sweetie. Sweetie. My honey has, is just, why are people outside? <laughs> um, you know why? Because they drank too much red wine and well, they're like, you know what's a good idea? Let's right. go outside. Well, people are forever trying to get me to fucking kayak. And I don't use that word, kayak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because there's one of them where you're like solely in control. Maybe it's a kayak. Is that it, right? Yeah, is there a kayak. canoe over you? You're not having to trust some asshole in the back to steer. <laughs> I want the one where like yeah. I, I keep a parasol. I don't want That's somebody behind me trying okay. to steer me with their paddle. No, okay. Well, no, but I want that. I want well, the one where I don't have to work. Actually, I want the <laughs> shit where I'm not outside. And I don't understand why people did some poor That's girl fell pool. to her death today. Did you see? Like, what? Yes, yeah, ten years old from where? No. I cannot say Fall Creek Falls, or you can edit it out. Oh, edit it out. Edit it out. Sorry, oh, I didn't mean to say a thing. No, I shouldn't okay. say. A local. Well, everybody's state park. been dying at Cummins, not Fall Creek Falls. Yeah. It's anywhere because yeah. it's outside. I mean, she just slipped it's off. Out. Don't go outside. You'll don't die. Don't go outside. She so just outside, slipped off the natural selection trail or something. So, God. Um, it was terrible, and and it really is terrible, and I hate it. But it. But I'm, that's why I'm, you don't go outside. But I, and I'm telling you, take any amount of news stories. Take any amount of. Facebook feeds and and what and look at how much terrible stuff happens inside versus outside <laughs> and give it back to me. <laughs> I know that you sound like why I carry an extra forty pounds consistently, and nobody's going to argue that point. But it's he, cool he, and he comfortable the vast majority of the time. That's my honey. Honey, don't go outside. Honey. <laughs> Honey, don't go outside. <laughs> don't go outside. Just, just don't. The do worst it. thing is, is that the defining factor of me is going to be this obnoxious laugh. So maybe you need to edit mm-hmm. out. Yeah, all the I'm not that worried. Somebody, to- somebody told me recently I need to just stop laughing because that's why I don't make so many friends. <laughs> it's because of the way that I laugh. 
Oh, Normally, I've not noticed shot, your but... laugh until it's hit me in the headset. I'm so right sorry, baby. I'm so this, sorry, this baby girl. I was like, oh, girl, how am I going like, to edit oh, girl, that? Stop okay. that. Stop that back. Yeah, we are we're count- counting on you for software, and we want to know your honey. 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 Tell us your honey. Um, <laughs> so this has been coming up amongst several circles, but mostly, of course, okay, I don't, I don't really frequent uh, the gay clubs anymore. Mostly because it's full of heteros. What the fuck? Not that I, I mean, I love, you know, I, I spend. It depends on the club in town. It I depends. went to a full on pageant here not long ago pageant. and it was delightful. Here? Well, I'm talking about we'll like. Have, we'll need a whole nother episode. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking specifically <laughs> and yes. to. Yes. Uh, there was an interview. There was an interview. <laughs> I'm speaking more to like in this in a city setting, absolutely, in an urban oh. setting, because it's, it's the avant garde thing to do. The, right? Yeah, the closest city. And I'm old now, and I don't go to clubs anyways. But I especially like the last couple of times that I've been over the last few years, it's been just full of heteros in the gay clubs. You make a valid point. It is full of and, and and but am I wrong or am I, am I right? Or am I right? The most vapid. Bitches. Not interesting hetero people. <laughs> yeah, the like the ones that are there just for the spectacle of it all. I hate that. Sorry. It's uh, your honey, and I'm being terrible. No, no, you're fine. I, I was just no, curious as to your experience with, I don't know why you hate it so much. It bothers me. Um, well, I, well, I'm constantly like trying to work through, well, because I teach young people, I'm constantly trying to work through how to help people. I'm oh, sorry. This is fucking mic was right here. I'm sorry. I'm um, constantly trying to work through how to help people be, um, how to help them talk to other human beings in a way that is like talking to people like a human being. And I do feel like even here in this town, there's a little bit of that element of spectacle where we just saw this when we went out last Friday where people were acting like um, one particular guy we went with was a spectacle. He was fun to hang out with because of his, you know, because of his, his sexual identity. Um, did you not catch on to that? No. That was something he was bitching about. Um, you might not have heard that part. Or like, there were a couple of women who were like, oh God, you're so oh, fabulous. Yes, and yes, I want to yes, hang yes. out with you so yes. much. Yes. Because but you're so uber gay. Because you're, you're so uber gay. Well, not just uber gay, but just like you, um, okay, yes, that's the yeah. issue is that you're just an accessory to that exactly. person. Exactly. You are an accessory that proves that I am a little bit outside the box. Well, which but not like really. caricature to me. Yes, yes, it's a caricature. Not character, but caricature. Yeah, they're using that person as a caricature. That's why that word you use, vapid, is... The best because it's people who are vapid, totally vapid, who would treat another human being like an accessory. But they don't think that they're doing that. And, to, and when you call them on it, they're like so offended. And then, you know, they're crying their like white tears. And who's got time for that? Um, but yes, it's, it's that's that's the biggest Is that issue. What I've been doing low these 26 years, crying white <laughs> tears. Crying, crying white tears. tears. <laughs> you just <laughs> called right. me out on a podcast. <laughs> God, my white tears. <laughs> you can only, I'm sick of all y'all's yeah. white tears. All through my, all through my entire well, half of a life, separates white tears. Us from the animals is our ability to access our us, but continue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I remember some years ago, um, I, I mean, I was a big club kid in my 20s. Like, that's what I lived for. Saturday night, Nash- it was all about uh, the club. The town hey, that we won't hey. Both Nashville in and in Vegas, you're, I was a club kid. You're still in, the, you're still in your no, 20s. No, no. You're not still a club kid. You're still in your I'm not in my twenties. No, I'm, I'm over gonna, my twenties. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm. They were not fun. In my 20s. He's yeah. gonna make my husband jealous. He's already worried about you all the time. Anyway, for Why whatever is he reason, worried about oh, me because you know what? Yeah, because she's fabulous. Because she's yeah, yeah. Your husband is worried about me because I'm oh, fabulous. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, dude, don't worry. Oh my god, don't get me caught up in y'all's little. <laughs> if you could just for one second stop interjecting with your. <laughs> White woman tears. Thanks. I'm so sorry. Thanks. Your white woman would, perspective. Baby girl, I would always give you the keys. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's why your husband has the issue with I me. I would always give you uh, the keys. Anywho, um, it has. It's not so much the you know like straight people. I'm you know yes you know come to gay clubs but be respectful. Yeah. Don't come in um, expecting to just be entertained. By the and local, yet, and I'm not being devil's advocate, or yeah. nor um, words that aren't coming to me because of Chardonnay, but argumentative. Mm. But we do put a spectacle on, do we not? 
For ourselves, yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, so, there's it's, a, so it's for whom the bell tolls, so yes. to speak. Okay. It's for us. It's our safe space for us to act out, perform who what we want to perform. And that's not for show. If we were going to put that on show, maybe we'd be up on a stage somewhere in a theater. But no. Like, so there was an article that came out, I guess, in Outen.com or something about this woman about saying that gay men can't say where a woman can and can I go. And I was like, okay, yes, valid. Mm -hmm. However, if you're going to go to the leather bar on underwear night and you're going to sit there and gawk, that's not a place for you. A, why are you there? (laughs) Well, I mean, yes, it's for you. I mean, someone grunts it at me and I ran back to the piano bar. I don't know if that counts. (laughs) But I mean, like going in there and then being offended. It's like, oh, well, I'm honey, not offended. No, you, just why are you here then? Why? First of all, why are you in a leather bar, baby? Why? Are, why? Why? Like, I could see, like, okay, I, you want to go to the drag show? No, but I mean, like, for a I straight woman, that question, that, for a straight that's woman, odd world to me too. But go oh. ahead. Like, yes, go to the drag show, you know, take it in, you know, try not to be so obtrusive to the whole scene and take over and be be obtrusive, be respectful, be respectful. But that's the issue is that they're being obtrusive. Um, But there is a a specific point about like, well, okay, are they like, then why, why, why are you going? You say that you are deserving of going anywhere that you want to. It's like, okay, yes, you are. But why do you feel the need to go to the leather bar, sweetie? And you're not into, at least not into, like, into leather. Then why are you there? You're there for a spectacle. And then you're there and you're making the other folks that are there for their reasons, making them feel uncomfortable. It's those kinds of things that we're talking about. I was like, well, yes, everyone deserves to be able to go everywhere. But no one deserves to be on a stage, on a platform, uh, when that's not what that uh, situation is calling for. But you're putting them on there. So stop it, honey. Stop it. I mean, I have a friend, James, God rest his soul. He used to drag me to the Eagle in yep. Atlanta back in my younger days, which, you know, based I've been on this there. conversation. Was yesterday. Means, like, that's like nine or ten, I get it. Mm-hmm. And um I love that you were the Eagle at nine. And <laughs> I was, and then it was rated and there was a thing that's on my record. But um, <laughs> No, but I but I feel bad almost listening to you talk because I was there in my Button down Oxford and my dirty Marty with two blue cheese stuffed olives, and I was there for the show. No, but, but I was it's different there. But I wasn't judgmental. I will say that. That's I will the- go down on record and saying that. But I was like, oh, honey, you should do that. And how? No, but no, like the, it's, why is the pet shop. It's on? different when you're there, as a, like <laughs> watching. You're so a- angry. <laughs> <laughs> pet shop. <please. laughs> Just asking questions. The difference between you being there is that you weren't all acting offended. Oh, I was. And wasn't, like, what I is was this? Like, why is this happening? It's like, nor honey. Offensive. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, it's no. when people go into a space and, ex- and and exact their norms on what's supposed to happen. Then I think we're really hitting on it because when I was in that space, that was unusual to me, and I was like, I will go, but I will not grunt at anyone and I will not look like that and yeah. whatever you do that yeah yeah honestly like there was someone in a dog do your thing I, I like, watch okay, do your thing fascinating and I hope that I get to talk about that like but, as a playwright one day or something but I mean until then I'll talk about it here and it was and it was fascinating but it what but I was not judgmental even if I didn't want to participate and it's not even necessarily about like uh I, I, my my honey isn't about uh, a straight like straight women going into these spaces is about anybody that's going into a specific space and being judgmental. Cause even like with amongst gay men where we've gone to a particular club where it wasn't their scene or whatever. And they just stood in the corner and judged everything. And it's like, well, why, mm-hmm. why are What's you even here? There? Insecurity. Mm-hmm. Insecurity. Yeah, it's right. like, it's one thing to just go in and be like, okay, this the isn't my thing, but I'm going to take it in and like observe or whatever. But you sitting over there being all high and mighty and you're like, uh, 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 then why are you here? Why don't you go home or go somewhere else that's more comfortable for you? Why are you subjecting because some people? people? Are drawn to negativity and a place where they can be judgmental. And they're the worst and they should go. I, feel like, <laughs> I really like how feisty this makes you. Um, this is not me feisty at all. I'm sorry. You've not seen me feisty. I was going to say, I feel I like think, it ramps up a notch from here. I don't think yeah, I, like I don't I'm, think I'm, I'm sitting here like You're being really calm. Good. You're so like, calm. You obviously don't know that well. I hope I've made 
God, that hurt. Was that on purpose? He just stabbed me in the heart like that. Uh, really? You don't know me. That okay, well. take yeah, your white again. Take your white your one. Take my tears. white tears. Your white tears. <laughs> your white take woman white tears. tears take it to bad moms. The you, Christmas version. I told you I would always version. give you the keys. I heard oh, your bad mom's I bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me you I didn't go. It. Tell me you didn't go in I mass. did not go see bad moms. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> I did watch it on Netflix. Proud my husband. You. Thank you. But, <laughs> wow. No. All right. Um, on that note. No, but I totally, I I can't, I don't know. I, I just, I don't like it when people put more hate in the world. I don't feel like there's any I reason for that. And if that. you want to, and I like, <laughs> I like your honey because it's one of those things. Well, I mean, I like your honey, but I mean, I like your honey because it's one of, I know. I'm wow. sh- I'm, this is why she hates me. I'm a shameless flirt. I don't I'm hate terrible. you. I, I just need a third here to protect me. Honey. 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 Thank you for, <laughs> honey. for being here. Her again, next one, be her next one's going to be like, over. honey, stop saying you believe in monogamy and then shamelessly hitting on me while we're recording a podcast. That's right. going to be the next one. But um, Monogamy, monogamy. <laughs> I like you so I don't know. <laughs> I, like, so that's a whole nother topic. Oh. Yeah. I've monogamy? gone back and forth. Wait, wait, we get to do this oh again God, tomorrow. Oh my God, let's talk about monogamy. <laughs> 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 let's talk about monogamy. Yes. Can we Sorry. talk about monogamy? We'll, we'll just table work this. That we'll, ta- we'll table <laughs> this. <laughs> no, but do let me say, I don't like when people hate on the world. And I think I understand exactly what you're talking about. It's the same. It's the same thing as anybody who walks into someone else's. I'm not, I hate that phrase safe space because it's been co-opted by the fucking right to be a bad thing. But anyone who walks into someone's space that is supposed to be somewhere where you can express yourself and be comfortable and then tries to dominate it with their bullshit. Yep. I cannot stand that. It's like, if you are going to, if you're going to take a journey into someone else's world where they have their own experiences and then then take that journey and be fully a part of it. Yes. Do not go in there with your bullshit. Yep. Be sensitive to it. Yeah. Cry your white tears. Cry your white tears. <laughs> elsewhere. 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 Not in your apartment. Do not cry on your, your white sweet, tears. On your sweet, sweet shoulder. In my... <laughs> Just so we're clear, this box of Chardonnay is getting light and I'm, my white tears may be imminent. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I just want to warn you. I mean, you. I do. I so on cry. that note, uh, thank you, Linda's, <laughs> thank for you joining for your me. last and final thank podcast. Thank you for tolerating us. Uh, that's oh. been a couple of Linda's. Um, <laughs> all of the things that we mentioned, I'll have them in the show notes, I guess, so you can... You know, stay abreast of what's going on because we don't know what's going on. And they, this this conversation went everywhere and nowhere all way all at the same time. But I love it. That's why we're here okay. because it's about conversation and it's about where you never know where conversation is going to take you. And it. I would say on that note, <laughs> please enjoy your journey over on the bridge. You're, you're like I love that you're leaning away from your mic. But enjoy your journey enjoy. over here, far away to the left. Yeah, <laughs> I love that you're leaning in for effect. But it's away from your mic. Guys, I'm not cool at all. I have no coolness. I'm all just right. lucky that Desiree tolerates me. Um, on that please, note. On that note, enjoy your journey on the bridge over the river by. And all God's people said, amen. 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 All right. All right. That's a couple of windows. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. You're not a bit right. <laughs> not a bit. What's wrong with everyone here? <laughs>